Okay, so got the new ZVE1 and uh, very, very impressed with it. Uh, it's so light, it's so mobile. Um, a lot of people obviously have expressed concern about the overheating. Um, I've used it for about four days now. I, haven't, I don't think I've even come close to overheating. Um, I'm on the dynamic active stabilization right now. So this will give you an idea. Let me just walk about. And this is a 24 mm lens. So this is if I just walk normal handheld, no gimbal, literally just holding the camera in my hand. Um, so I physically, maybe I should get a mirror. Um, there's no mirror nearby. <laughs> but yeah, uh, basically I literally just grip the, the camera with my fingers. So there's no grip, nothing. I'm literally just holding the camera with my hands. Obviously on a 24 mm lens, the picture is quite zoomed in. Uh, I mean, I would lie, lo I've loved it to be a little bit further away. Uh, let me just see if I can. Uh, okay, cool. Now I can't change the stabilization while I'm recording. Um, but yeah, it'll be nice if it was just a little bit further away on a 24 mm lens. My lens selection was quite a mission to find a good lens that actually works well because this is a small camera. So if you get a big lens with it, it, it kind of defeats the whole point of the camera. So I wanted to get a small lens. That was very, very important for me to get a small lens. Um, so the one I basically settled for was the, the 24mm f2.8. It's almost like the, the, the travel lens for Sony. Um, so that's basically the lens I have now. And this is the field of view that you'll get if you vlog with dynamic active. Because I really, really wanted to use dynamic active. Yes, it does crop in, but then just get a wider lens. <laughs> and I'm just going to, uh, 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 dogs are having a bit of a spat here. Um, so I was basically just yeah, trying to find a lens that's wide enough. I think 20 mil would be ideal. Um, maybe even 16. I did buy the the 14 mil f1.8. The problem is the lens is just too big. The lens is much bigger than the camera, so it's just not as mobile. I want something that's very, very mobile, almost pocketable. If I have a if, if I have some pants with big pockets, I can actually put this in the pocket, which is pretty cool. Uh, I don't really want to, obviously, because of the little uh, microphone on top. Um, I don't think it's going to last very long if you constantly take it in and out of your pocket. But uh, yeah, as you can see, if I walk around, the stability is just, that's just phenomenal. And this is not on a gimbal. I can prove it to you. This is not a gimbal. <laughs> I'm just holding it in my hand. <laughs> I do find that it doesn't like turning sideways too much. So if you turn like this while vlogging, then it does actually, some shake does come through. I think it's because it sort of tries to keep you in the middle of the sensor, but as soon as you turn, you sort of hit the side of the sensor. So if there is shake, one of the dimensions is sort of limited off, so it can't absorb the shape and shake in that direction. So if you do vlog and you do need to turn, uh, it, I do find that if you just turn a little bit slower, like I'm doing now, then it do it does basically get some time to push you to the do there's a little bit of gap still left, might be a little bit thinner, but I think it does sort of figure out what you want to do and then it adjusts it that way. So the stabilization still keeps up. So yeah, this is my this is my lens pick. 24 mil f2.8, nice and small. Um, very, very mobile. Even the picture quality is just phenomenal with this lens. Uh, so yeah, definitely an option. The, there's not really many lenses smaller than this. I have tried some APS-C lenses. The problem with the APS-C lenses is that if you do pick one of the smaller APS-C lenses, the bigger one, bigger ones actually work. I know the, the 16mm f1.4, the Sigma one, pretty popular lens. That one actually works pretty well. If you, if you pop it on ya, uh, I haven't personally done it, I've just seen some videos. If you pop it on ya and you put it on dynamic active, then it does crop in enough so you don't actually see the vignetting. <laughs> so it actually works pretty well. You've got the super stabilization and you're using a relatively small lens. The problem that is that lens is still quite bulky. It is on the bulky side. 
if you want to um, get a small lens, even some of the, the kit lenses, they actually have vignetting, especially on the wide end. If you zoom in a little bit, you sort of can get away from that. And the problem is also that uh, you can't just, if, if you put the lens on and you manage to crop with the dynamic active, so you don't see the vignetting. The problem is if, if there is a bit of shake, then the corners start pulsing uh, a weird color. <laughs> so the corners will actually show, it'll be, become dark and bright, dark and bright, dark and bright, as the vignetting circle moves in and out, and it's trying to stabilize. So all things considered, this is the lens I picked, 24mm f2.8, and I'm very happy with it. It's very small, very compact. The nice thing is as well is, I don't really want to go too much wider. If you do go too much wider, then it does become a bit of a problem if you actually want to take photos. So for vlogging, it's slightly on the tight end, but for photos, it's slightly on the wide end. Because remember, when you take photos, then you're going to use the full sensor. So then suddenly it's going to be very wide. So I think it's a quite, quite a good trade-off. Um, you can also, one of the options is if you do want to do vlogging like I'm doing now, if you're willing to have a little bit more shake in your shot, you can actually just use active stabilization instead of dynamic active. Then what you obviously get a bit of a wider field of view, but you might get a couple of shakes coming through. But yeah, so far, I'm gonna do a little bit of a run. I'm gonna try and keep the, stab the camera a little bit more stable. Um, so let's see, I'm running now. <laughs> <laughs> I even jumped there. So yeah, <laughs> don't know how that'll look. That will, that'll be interesting. But uh, yeah, the stabilization of this is just insane. <laughs> I love it. Basically, it's it's a package and quality that you just can't beat. It is. It's very small. I mean, you can literally put it in your pocket. It's as if you're carrying a gimbal with you, which is awesome. You get good quality sound. You get 10-bit uh, recording. I mean, you can do your S-Log, your HDR, your whatever. You get good sound. I'm actually using the onboard sound right now. So it's really good sound. So yeah, and it's on auto. So, <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> sorry. It's on auto. So it obviously, at the moment, I assume it's getting the sound from the front. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just unbeatable. Get a good lens, nice low light. Uh, my sort of question is still, uh, how, do you, how do you know if you should use a phone or something like this? And uh, the, a lot of people obviously do tests. They'll say, cool, okay. No, you, you don't need a camera, you can just use your phone. But then they always test in daylight. It's like you should not test in daylight. That's not your, your problem is not daylight. Your problem is nightlight. So when you are indoors and then underneath fluorescent lights or maybe when the lights are not on, maybe you're outside and it's sort of, there's a light in the distance, then a phone just doesn't work. It just falls apart completely. Whereas with this, you might get slight noise, but you still get that sharp, sharp, sharp image quality. So yeah, I don't think I don't think it's 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 viable yet to go to phones. I think you should still buy a camera. Um, this is obviously a little bit on the expensive side. I think the cheaper cameras it's sort of borderline the same quality as a phone. So I don't know if cheaper cameras are actually worth it anymore. So for those that can't afford it, I still suggest go a actual camera route. The quality is just unbeatable. And now you've got a gimbal in your pocket. I mean, a GoPro is also always an option, but GoPros don't, can't do low light. As soon as you go inside, so let me just go in here. If I would have, if I had a GoPro or a phone and I walked in here, instantly the quality would just degrade to nothing. And suddenly all the details will just be lost. Um, let's just go to a bit of a darker corner here. I mean, right now, if I stand like this, this is ISO 4000. 
And with phones and, and uh, uh, GoPros, the picture would just completely fall apart. And also to get that nice background blur, you just can't beat it. Let's just see, here's a bit of a darker corner, yeah? Okay, so now we are still ISO 5000, but that's not bad. For ISO 5000, you still get nice, crisp outlines, autofocus is still good. It's just unbeatable. You're just going to find another package that performs like this. And uh, yeah, I'm really, really happy. The only thing now is now I really want to go out. <laughs> I want to take it with because I can fit in my pocket. I can just take it anywhere. Now I just want to go out. I just want to go and do stuff. So whereas with my previous cameras, I had the A7S3. Well, I still have it. The A7S3, the A7 IV, they bulky. You have to get straps or bags or something to stash it and carry it when you go out to wherever uh, but this it's i can just take it anywhere and i don't need anything i don't need a strap but i don't need a handle i don't need a bag i can literally just take it as is so really really excited just to go out there and do stuff <laughs> so yeah i highly recommend it highly recommend it and obviously just for the record I'm in South Africa. I mean, Sony isn't really here. They don't really exist here. So <laughs> they didn't give me anything. They didn't, there's no money that exchanged hands. I just bought this because I really wanted it uh, with my own money. And uh, yeah, definitely worth it. Definitely worth it. Cool. Awesome. Yeah, if you want to see more, uh, remember to subscribe. And if you like this video, remember to press that button. Until next time, this is Steve. Ciao.